Hey everybody. Um, so people have been asking me in the past, what can I use for protection? How do I protect my house? You know, how do I protect my kids from, you know, these spirits, negativity, um, energy, and there's so many different ways people can go about it. Um, I'm only going to share with you what works for me. Um, but I, you don't have to trust and believe what I am telling you. Um, you just got to find your own way of what you will use to help you help your, I mean, to get through all this, the darkness and anything that's bothering you spiritually. So first and foremost, what's very protective is prayer. Um, you know, I can't say more about that than, you know, prayer will help you get through anything. You know, I'm, I consider myself a Catholic, but I also believe in Native American culture. I believe in a lot of, um, I believe in a lot of things that are, that lead me to the true light. So I will use those to help me with my journey. So I pray, I pray to the great creator, God, and I always ask him every day to protect me. So that's how I usually do that. What I, what other thing I do is I'll ask God to put the white light of protection over me. And when I do that, I'm, I'm uh, every time I swear I see a dove and then I, and then he puts the lights and I, and I see the light coming down. And I allow that light from the very top of my head to slowly go down my all the way through my body. Just take my time with it all the way down. Now, um, I even go all the way down to the back, the bottom of my feet, and bring it back up. And just take your time with it. Now, if you can practice that every day, that also repels off any negativity. Um, what else? I mean, there's so many different things that I um, that I use. You know, Sylvia Brown. She was a a very good psychic um, psychic medium. She was on TV and she had books. Um, she, I remember one of the things she would say is that you can never be overprotective. And I totally agree with that. So um, there's, you know, there's so many things. So I brought some stuff in front of me um, just to show you what kind of would help me um, when, I, when I need protection. So um, as many as you see of my videos on Facebook when I'm praying, you always see me praying with my rosaries. Now you see all these medals that are on there. I just put those on there. I put those on there just for protection for myself. Um, each saint is on there, and it's, I just feel like it's protective. Now, I did. I can do a reading. I did a reading on myself, and my spirit guide, I said, um, can rosaries protect me? And it says, rosaries will protect you if they've been blessed, and you, when you hold on to them, if you keep in your purse or in your pocket. Um, the vibration that comes off of it repels the negativity, um, the bad, evil spirits that want to come around. So, blessed rosaries are what can do like a big, you know, it's a huge thing that will help people. If you're a Catholic, um, I would say, you know, 10 Hail Marys, and when you're doing it, uh, meditate on Jesus and Mary. Um, that's really very protective too. Catholics, as we believe, Mary is the queen of all angels up there. So, if you want more protection, that's what I would suggest. And I have, and I do that sometimes if I can remember. If I need more protection, especially, I will do that. Um, let's see what else will help. So I have holy water, okay, and you, I mean, I have holy water where you can just go like this and just squirt it everywhere, and I also have holy water like this where I put it in a spray bottle. Now, like, um, when I'm seeing somebody and they have, like, an attachment on them or they're having some kind of dark, you know, something dark around them, I'll grab my holy water and I'll say, is alright if I spray, spray you? And they're like, yeah. So I, I spray their face like this and I spray the back of their back and their neck. And, you know, usually they tell me they feel a little bit better at that moment. Now, holy water um, does help, and um, if you can get, if you can get some, hold on to it. This is like gold in your house. That's all I gotta say. Um, I've sprayed my entire house with this stuff, and it works wonders. I sprayed my bed, my dogs. I mean, in, and it will repel anything away. Now, if you don't have holy water, um, the second best thing you can use is. Um, salt water and when I say salt I mean use a ton of salt don't use like a little bit of salt the more salt you can put in a spray bottle not something like this but probably bigger like one of those bigger ones shake it up really good what I would tell people is to spray the walls um, you know spray every corner in your house just spray it spray everywhere your doors everything because some of these spirits these these entities like to hide in walls and um, they're you know they like to hide in corners they like to hide in dark things so if you can spray the walls, that helps repel them. Now, salt, even in the Bible, talks about how salt is very, it's, it, um, it's all about, you know, it's a lot of cleansing with salt, salt's um, purifying. Spirits don't like salt, especially the dark ones, they hate it. 
So you'll hear it sometimes when somebody has um, an object um, that, they ha that, that they required or they bought at a flea market, for instance, and it has some kind of dark entity attached to it. Um, usually a medium or somebody that knows stuff about this will say, well, set that on salt. Because what that will do is it holds, it just holds that spirit, even though it's attached to that the object, it will just hold it there until you're able to bury it somewhere else or whatever the psychic or medium tells you what you got to do with it. But salt is very, um, it's, it's one of the biggest things to help with, you know, helping cleanse, it helps cleanse houses. It, salt is very good when you want to get rid of spirits. Um, that's one of my best things I can say, a lot of salt and a little bit of water and just spray. Now, also with salt, I would say is that, you know, people who say they, or feel they have like an attachment on them. And usually the attachments right back here is when I see them. And I've seen them poke their heads back here like that and hide. So they kind of hide back here like they're hiding. They're just holding on to somebody's back and just draining them all the time. So, um, and then, you know, of course, you probably need a priest, a pastor, or a medicine man to get rid of it. But until then, I will say go take um, Epsom salt bath. And when you're using Epsom salt, put a ton of it in there and just soak in it. Now, it's, it's, it might not be the remedy, but it will be a remedy for that moment until it's taken off by a priest or a medicine man or somebody. So do that and that will work wonder i mean that will help quite a bit um salt water is huge so that was one of my best things of protecting is what i gotta say now also like say if you have a kid or um or if you keep seeing dark spirits in your bedroom or at your house in the middle of the night and you get kind of spooked um what i would suggest is have a flashlight you know i mean it sounds simple and easy but you know, what's funny is when you turn on a light, these dark spirits always seem to hide and they don't like it. They, they want to flee. They don't want people to know they're around. So if you see see these things, just get a flashlight, show it at it, then it will disappear. Um, you know, it's light always wins over darkness. But, um, you know, like some people, when they have houses that have a lot of um, poltergeist activity or dark spirits around their house, you know, like shadow people, They'll keep their lights on in their bedroom because I think they know that, you know, if you keep a light on, they won't bother you because they would like it when we're, when it's dark because they don't want to be seen. Um, let's see what else will work. Let's see. Um, so we're going to talk about metals. Metals are pretty important to you. As a Catholic, I mean, even people who are not Catholic, I, um, I give these medals out to people when they're in some kind of crisis when I'm doing, especially one on one reading with somebody. I have, um, I have Mary medals and St. Benedict medals. Now, St. Benedict medal is very powerful. They use, priests use these medals in exorcisms, and, um, and, they, and it's very powerful, a very powerful medal. It repels demons and darkness. So, um, and you can buy them cheap online. I mean, I buy a bulk of them for about $50, and I think I get 100 or 200 for that many. And what I do is I'll spray them with holy water and then hand them to the people that need them, and I'll tell them what they need to do, like wear them when you're sleeping, you know, put one in your bed or something. You know, um, also St. Benedict medals are really good for if you get them in bulk, you put one on each one of your window seals and over your door seals. Um, because what that will do is repel anything from sneaking in your house in the middle of the night. Because you do get those, um, those dark spirits, those shadow people that like to linger in houses. And they'd like to come in at night and drain us and give us nightmares. They feed off of our fear. So I would say that would be one of the best things to put on your, and I have them all over my window seals and my door frames. And I, I, I never had anything creep in my house because I've had that. So if you can remember to do that and put them on every one of your window seals, that will be the best thing. Um, the Mary medal, um, I'm sure you guys all seen that, the, the Virgin Mary, that's a very powerful medal too. The devil doesn't like her. She, um, the Catholics believe that she crushed the Satan's head as a snake. And um, so that medal is really good to wear when you're going to sleep especially so if you are prone to nightmares all the time night terrors um things that that you know that you feel like there's things are always haunting you that would be the mantle you'd want to wear around your neck as well saint michael metal um he's a very powerful um you know archangel he's in the bible and you christian or catholics all know about him um you know there's a prayer that catholics say to saint michael to ward off evil if you don't know it, um, look it up and try to memorize it. You don't have to be a Catholic to wear these medals or know these prayers. It really, these, it's all powerful and it will work. So, um, you know, just learn the St. Michael prayer and it will protect you. Um, so, I, you know, one of the biggest things I'll tell people is fear is what these things like to feed off of us. 
and we have to control that fear. You live in a house that's haunted. You're being terrorized by poltergeists. You're being bothered by, um, you know, somebody that lived in a house before you moved in there, and and all these things keep draining you, and you're tired, and um, you're just exhausted, and you're getting all these nightmares. These things, these things like to do. They like to give you. They like to scare you. They like to feed up that negativity, that evil, that fear. So what I would tell people is the best thing for you to do is um, learn to meditate. When we meditate, the it, it keep, meditation does a lot of good things. It's, I always call it the natural medicine because if you're a worrier, you're an overthinker, um, you know, you're always in fear, you learn to meditate and you do it every day the right way, you won't, we won't have that happen anymore. And besides, when you meditate, what it does is it slows the mind down and so the mind's always going. So when you learn to meditate, when you breathe through our nose, hold it for nine seconds, do it three or four times, and then go into that. When you learn to meditate, the brain slows down and you won't have to be thinking. So then we start and so then we start working with the spirit more. So understand that spirit and ego don't work together. So ego is more of the brain, and then we have a spirit. When you learn how to control this the ego and start working with the spirit, then it, things get a little bit easier. But also understand that when we learn to meditate, we don't we're not, we're not scared. I can walk, I've been known, I mean, I'm not to be bragging, but I've been to houses where there is real demons in there. I'm like really dark, I mean, like demon, de bad demons. Not the little ones, but the big ones. And um, I wasn't scared of them. Normally, I probably would be freaked out and I wouldn't go in walking in a house like that. But I learned to meditate and I'm, I'm not scared. But I've also asked God for protection and I protect myself in these certain ways, so I'm okay with that. So I know I'm not, I'm not going to be bothered. And they won't bother me because they're looking for... These dark entities, these dark entities and demons are looking for the weakest link in that house. They're looking for, um, in their mind, the people that are going to be more scared, you know, the, the more susceptible ones. So if you have a little kid in there, usually little kids get scared the most in houses because that's who they like to feed off that energy more. You ever hear the kids saying, well, there was a monster in my closet. Well, it was probably a dark spirit in that kid's closet and he was telling you the truth. And that spirit was trying to drain him of energy so we can have more energy to feed off him. So, you know, uh, like for situations like that, like I said, grab a, um, you know, put a flashlight next to a kid's bed. So that, kid, that helps give the kid confidence and then tell the kid to tell the spirit to say no and get away. Um, you know, even a salt lamp in a room for a little kid or nightlight because they want to see what's going on and then they can tell the spirit to go away. Anything you can do to help a little kid or anybody to go, you know, that's dealing with this stuff it will, so they can sleep better, it will be great. But a lot. Of, but what you. But what really works is controlling the fear and gaining the confidence within you. That's what it's all about. So that's the biggest secret about all of this. And I'll show you more stuff. How I, other things I do to protect myself. But that is the biggest one. I can. I can't say more about it. Learn to meditate, control the fear, and um, gain confidence, and you'll be fine. Um, having crucifixes around your house is very important. You know, when a crucifix is a, it was Jesus on the cross. It repels some darkness, but it's better than nothing than to have nothing on your wall that, then you know, that it's not, not going to do anything. So I have a few um, crucifixes around my house. And, you know, and there's times where I need to pray to God and I need something to look at. I'll look up at the crucifix and I'll pray to him. So um, that, that works for me. Now, there's different, now, now we're going to talk about smudging. There's different kinds of smudging you can use. Now, this is called um, Palo Santo. It's a wood that comes off of a tree. Um, that's cut down and you can probably order or buy it at certain stores, but or you can get it at you know from families or people that know how to get it, you know, spiritual people. You burn this and this is very powerful. And you can go around your house and it smells really it smells really good too. You just go around your house and say some prayers and it repels anything dark around you. Um, you know, you can keep it in something like this. If it's not gonna burn your house down, just burn it and and it will just infuse the whole house. So these are very powerful. Um, it's called Palo Santo sticks. They're very good. So look into that. Now um, smudging um, comes from my Native American roots, and there's so many different ways you can smudge. Um, so I like to use um, sage. Sage is very powerful. There's different kinds of sages you can use, and they all work. There's some desert sage. There's um, you know there's white sage. Um, I'm sure there's just like a handful of them. I don't know their names, but they all work. They all have a, if you ever smell sage when it burns, it all has that, that smell that you won't forget. And it's very powerful. So, um, let me see here. So here's like what I call as a smudge stick, okay? What you would do is, I don't have a lighter, but you'd burn that. You'd burn right here, 
and then you would use, uh, I use a, like a shell and I use this. And I go around and I use my feather wand and I start, you know, blowing the smoke into corners and into dark areas. Every part of my house, I will do that. So that's, so I'm, what I'm doing is I'm keeping a barrier from anything from coming in. So it's pushing things out. And it's pushing all negativity energy out. It's pushing negative spirits out. While you're doing this, keep a window or a couple windows open in case that spirit needs some place to flee. That's very important too. Now, when you're smudging, use the prayer that works best for you. Some Native Americans, we, they, we have different prayers that we would use to smudge. Christians, you can use a Christian prayer, you know, the Our Father prayer. But while you're doing this, for instance, if you have a negative spirit in your house, you got to be, um, excuse my language, you have to be an asshole. So what I mean by that is that you need to learn to get, gain confidence. So when you're being an asshole to push these spirits out, you're telling that, F, that little effort to get the hell out. Um, this is my house. You don't belong here. You were never invited. And you just get mean with it and just tell and and when you're doing that you're gaining your confidence back so that's very important for you to know so um i like when i'm i like when i'm going to a house and somebody says can you cleanse my house i will say sure but i want you to i want you to follow me because i'm going to show you how i how i cleanse so that you will can so you can do that and you can teach your kids how to do the same in the future so you won't be scared you know some people get so scared that they're frightened to do this stuff or they'll do this when they're when they're scared you'll see them shaking while they're trying to smudge well, all that's going to do is draw that evil back. So when you're smudging, it's really, it's, it's like a double-edged sword. You have to be careful. This is, um, this is medicine, what we call medicine in the Native American culture. And, and it does a lot of, you know, spiritual medical things for us. So if you're drunk and you're using this, um, or if you're doing some, if you're an evil person, you know, in your mindsets to get even with people and you're smudging, you're not, what you're going to do is you'll be bringing negativity and dark energy into your house all the time. When you're smudging, you have to be in the right, right frame of mind. You have to be prayerful. And you have to just try to be, I mean, sorry, you have to be confident. You can't be scared. Because, like I said earlier, like attracts like, and you'll be bringing that crap back in, and you don't want it. So that's really important for you guys to know that. So when you're smudging, that's that's how I would smudge. And that's the best way of smudging. You know, some people will say, well, Paul, um, you know, um, my grandma or my, my great grandfather taught me how to do this and that. It's not the way I, I was told. Well, if, it, if your grandparents told you how to do smudge in a certain way, then follow what they told you. But um, either way, um, I'm just explaining to people, this is the best medicine right here to learn to smudge. Just make sure you're confident anytime you're smudging. It's very important. Um, right here, oh, it's kind of falling apart here. This is called um, pine. Pine's also medicine that we use in our Native American culture. Um, you can boil this, you can burn it, whatever it is that brings off that aroma, that, that fume, those, that smoke is the same thing just like the sage. It smells good around your house. But one thing about sage is you gotta be careful. You have to watch it when you're burning it. Cause, um, I mean, pine, sorry, when you're burning pine, it likes to spark and, and the flames will go different directions. So be careful with it, especially when it gets drier. Um, in our native American culture, I'm just told that, you know, if you put, break this up and put it in like a little sack and put it in your shoes, um, it helps keep away sickness, you know, you know, colds and fevers. So it's, it's good medicine in so many different ways that we don't, you know, that we're not taught in our culture. But this is the best stuff right here to also help ward off evil and dark spirits. Um, let's see here where else I can talk about what else I got here. Um, so we're going to talk about some stones really quick also. Some protective stones. So I, I found a stone here. If you can see it, I'll try to bring it up here. This is called tourmaline. Okay, and you can buy this uh, this one at any um, spiritual bookstore. You can buy them online. Any um, psychic fair, they come and um, you can you know even if online you can buy some that people have made looking into animals or hearts or whatever it is. This stone is I would say is like one of the most powerful stones that's very protective, and I'll explain why. Now um, I've done I was reading up on it about the termline, and it, what I read was the shamans around the world, like in, you know. Um, each continent all had shamans. Now, back thousands of years ago, even hundreds of years ago, they never spoke to each other. They never had communication like through the phones, the internet. So somebody was giving them information how to be how to protect their people and themselves. And they all wore a tourmaline, and they all knew where to find it in their own area where they were living. You know, and each continent has tourmaline somewhere. So that's what they were. That's what they were wearing. And my my readings tell me when you get tourmaline, you always wear it on your necklace and you put it under your shirt. Now I worked at a youth jail, a youth jail for about 19 and a half years, um, and you talk about energy draining you. 
You got the people there that were there draining you, the kids draining you. And it was just like, oh. And I finally I did a reading on myself. I said, what do I do? I'm so drained. And it said this, and this is what it told me the best thing to do. So I went and bought a couple of these. And I still have this one, by the way. And I worn it. And I'll tell you what, my energy wasn't drained. I, I'm coming back home and I'm feeling, real, I'm feeling refreshed. I'm so happy I got energy. So if you are around people that like to drain your energy, you're around evil or darkness, this is the second best thing right here, tourmaline. You, so always wear that for protection if you need to. Um, there are other rocks that also work. There's a one that's called black obsidian. That's another huge one that's really popular and very powerful. So you, it's the same thing. You you wear it under your neck, under your, I mean, right here under your um, under your shirt. Um, the Apache Tears is of another very powerful one that I've been told that you can use. Um, and I'm finding out a lot of these rocks that are very um, protective are black, and I find that interesting. And when you do a, when you go online or you look it up, like what are the protective rocks or stones I should wear, and they always seem to be black. Even the um, the dark crystals, I can't remember what they're called. They're, they're the smoky crystals. Um, and I thought I had one sitting here. Oh yeah, here it is. This is the one I like to wear when I'm doing readings. I'll put it under my shirt sometimes. That's my, my that's my favorite one that I use around my neck. It's a pretty big one. So um, I like that one. If I always feel like I'm being protective when I'm wearing it, and it's also good for when I'm you know working with psychic stuff. So that's what I like to use personally. Um, let's see. Now, also, my Native Americans, um, you don't have to be Native American to own this, but um, there's the satchel, the satchel right here. Okay, this is very protective for us. So this is what we call a medicine bag. And you can, um, this is the one I have. And there's herbs in here. Um, there's like things of different elementals in there, like elements. So I, have a, I think I have a shell in there. Um, I think a piece of fur is in there. Let's see what else is in there. Um, there's a, I think there was a rock, some um, coins I put in there, um, some sage, I think I said that. But there's certain things that you would put in here um, that's going to be that protective. You, and then what I do is I say a prayer to the great creator about this and ask him to bless this. And then I was told to keep it out and leave it out in the sun, you know, for a day or two. And then what you do is you carry, you carry this. You can either tie it on your belt loop, put it in your pocket, just like if I did with my rosaries. Or anything like that, and it's gonna protect you. There's, it's all about, um, it's all about the um. Let me call. I'm trying to remember. I was just the tip of my tongue here. I just lost it. Um, it's elemental stuff. It's like earth, earth um, spirits. It's, it's, it's very, very protective. It's very protective. Now, I wouldn't wear this if it, if I knew it wasn't protective. So again, um, I would check with my spirit guide. He, 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 um, he told me this is what I need to make. This is what's good for me. This is part of who my heritage is. So do it. So I have. I like to carry this when I'm out in the wilderness a lot because it's connected with with nature. It's got all the elements that's in there. I even wear it. Um, you know, if I'm going out just to go, you know, doing day to day stuff. So um, some people even wear it around their necks. You know, I, um, but it's medicine for us. Um, you can. You don't have to be Native American to own it. Um, if you don't know how to make a medicine bag, look it up online. Um, make sure, don't look up just one way of make, making it because that person might not know how to make it. Look up different ways of making it. So, so that way, if it all looks the same, then then follow what they're You know what I'm talking about? If you're going to more than one site and they all say the same thing, then follow that. If one site doesn't go follow the rest of them, then I wouldn't follow it. Um, but this is mine, and um, even when I hold it, I can feel, I can swear I can feel energy I'm coming off of it. I, I know I have a crystal in there too. So I don't, I mean, I've got a lot of stuff in here that I, you know, you can always take stuff out. You can put back stuff back in there, but follow what it says online and how to make one of these. They're very powerful. Or unless you know a medicine man or a medicine woman, that, or that teacher that can teach you how to do this, do it. It's very powerful. Um, let's see what else. So again, we brought up a lot of things tonight. Um, I talked about the white light of protection. That's very protective. Prayers are huge. Um, you'll never go wrong with any kind of prayer for protection. Now, also, um, if you're spiritual or if you're Native American or whatever your, your belief system is, it's okay to ask your ancestors, your family, your friends who crossed over to help to help you too. There's nothing wrong with that. Many times, um, you know, we'll ask our ancestors or our loved ones, "Hey, I'm having a hard time," or "Hey, um, I need some protection." You know, can you come through and help out? And then they do, and you'll and sometimes you'll see stuff that you can't explain or hear about other stories. So it's it's, it's it, they do help. Um, one thing I, I, I what also works for me, and I don't have it right now, is I just remembered it. Okay, so um, frankincense and myrrh are really powerful. Um, 
Now in the Bible, if you remember when Jesus was born, um, the wise men brought frankincense and myrrh. Now, in not only the Catholic Church, but I think a lot of Christian churches use that frankincense and myrrh when they're when they're lighting. Um, you know, it's just it's like smoke that comes up, and it's almost it's, a, it's a kind of like saging, but it's it's a different. It's just it's basically like saging is what it is. So what I do is, um, if you can get buy one of those those charcoals, they're like little discs, and they come in like in a pack. They're probably not very expensive. You can probably buy them at a, um, like I said earlier, like a Chris. I mean, not a Christian, but what do you call it? like a, a spiritual bookstore? You can probably order them online. And what you do is you, you lay that down and you put it in a container so it doesn't burn through anything, like maybe in a glass or maybe something steel or something. So you're going to put, you know, some frankincense and some myrrh inside of the, on top of that charcoal and you're gonna burn that charcoal and what it does is it's gonna fizz around it and then all of a sudden what it does is it burns, smoke will come up and it will melt that myrrh and that frankincense and it will go up into the atmosphere and it's very protective, very protective. Um, I was told demons don't like it, dark spirits hate it just like they hate sage. So, I mean, there's so many different things out there that you can do to protect yourself. I brought up many things that I use that I like to share with my, um, my readers and my customers. Um, as you can see, I'm always wearing a crucifix around my neck. Um, right here is a St. Benedict medal. I always sleep with one. Um, I mean, I have another necklace. If I don't sleep with this, I'll sleep with my other one. I just feel more protective that way. I mean, everybody's different, but you know, um, I am a medium and there, there's many times at night that I have spirits that like to bug me at night to, just so they can cross over. They know my energy and they feel it and they, and I'm not afraid of them. I'm kind of irritated at three or four in the morning where I have to um, get a spirit crossed over but um, what they'll do is they like to mess with me they'll make noises in the living room like um, something will jingle or something will fall in my bedroom and nobody's there might startle my dogs and then I wake, have to wake up and then I connect with my spirit guide I'm like what's going on and they're like well you have a spirit there and I'm like well what kind of spirit well a spirit that wants to cross over so then I connect with the spirit and I'm like hey um, what do you want and I explain and then I get them crossed over and I do the prayer and everything. So the reasons why, and I'll probably discuss this in another one of my videos, but the reason why that's, those spirits will come to me at night is because that's the only time that they can get my attention because I'm sleeping, I'm laying down, I'm not thinking, I'm resting. I mean, if I'm doing stuff all around my house or whatever I'm doing my whole life, the rest of my private life, whatever I'm doing the rest of the day, they're trying to get my attention and I'm not paying attention to what they're doing. So that's probably the best thing for them to do is say, hey, I'm just gonna come get bother you when you're asleep. And that's what they do. So I keep a salt lamp in my bedroom at night. I'm like a little kid. I, I mean, I don't, I don't mind sleeping in a dark house. I mean, or a dark bedroom. Honestly, I don't. But I want to see what's around me because I know who I am and I know what can be around me. So that's what I, I, I like. And my whole house at night, I have these little um, salt lamps or other things around my house um, all the way through at night. So I mean, it's just my way if I want to see what what's going on. I don't. I'm not scared. I really not. I'm in my medium. I can't. I'm not really not scared because this is like second nature to me. But I want to know what I'm seeing and how to work with it. So the best thing, again, you guys, no fear. Fear feeds the darkness. Fear feeds the um, the evil. Um, these dark entities. So remember what I told you is to learn that confidence. You get that confidence and you push that sucker out. Um, I hope all this helped you. I, I hope I try to explain to you how I do um, what I do to help. And I'll do other videos along the way to help you guys. And um, I'm trying, I, I, I don't know, I, I'm hoping that I can um, give you guys more information of what I do as time goes on. But thank you all for letting me do this tonight. Um, and I hope this helps. And if you guys ever need to come back to this video, help yourself. Share this with people that need help with you know, if they're having a hard time and what they need, maybe they need to learn how to protect themselves. This is, I hope this helps. Okay, God bless and you guys stay safe. Thank you.